Good morning. Hi. It is so exciting to see a room filled with my people. <laughs> um, my name is Nikki Lodico, and I'm the Director of Information Management here at the Ford Foundation. Welcome to the Advancing Archives Conference in our newly renovated Ford Foundation Center for Social Justice. I hope you all have a chance to wander around our new beautiful building um, throughout the day today. It really is quite special. Um, today's conference is being co-hosted by the Ford Foundation, the Rockefeller Archive Center, the Andrew Mellon Foundation, and the Hogg Foundation for Mental Health. And it's been since January 1990, and I did the math, that's nearly 30 years ago that we've had a convening like this. So needless to say, the field has changed pretty dramatically since then, so we have a lot to talk about. Um, before we begin, I just have a couple of logistic announcements that I want to make. Um, firstly, restrooms are, can be found um, to my left just around um, in the hallway and to the left of the painting. And you can also find restrooms near the elevator core. Um, exits on both sides of this room. And when lunch is served, just know that we're gonna be serving lunch on both sides of the room. You can join either one that's more convenient to you. Um, Again, about our stunningly beautiful building, you're free to move around the open spaces on our building, and those include the 10th floor, the 11th floor, and the first floor. Make sure you have your visitor ID with you um, so that you can get back um, into, if you go into the garden, you can get back into the office space with that. Uh, we do have plans to video record today's session, so we will respect any wishes for privacy that any of you have. Um, I think we mentioned in our promotional materials that there's a brand new exhibit in our gallery down on the first floor. It opened yesterday, and we encourage you to visit after our session ends. They're going to be open till about 6 p.m., so please feel free to go on down and do a self-tour. Um, next, tweeting is absolutely encouraged, and you can find um, the information here on the screens to my left and my right. And last but not least, I just want to say some thank yous. Firstly, to our conference planning team, um, Andrea Donahue from the Ford Foundation. Where are you, Andrea? <laughs> Bob Clark from the Rockefeller Archive Center. Hayan Abdiraman from the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation. And Elizabeth Stauber, I don't know where you are, Elizabeth, from the Hogg Foundation for Mental Health. And then I want to say a, a big thanks to our AV team and events team, and they'll be with us throughout the day, keeping everything humming and troubleshooting anytime um, we, if anything, if anything occurs. I don't expect that to happen. So and now I have the great honor of introducing Darren Walker, the president of the Ford Foundation who's going to kick off today's event. Um, it's easy for an organization to say that it's committed to preserving its historical records, but it's much more challenging for an organization to actually live that commitment and support the complex and not trivial resources needed to do that work. Darren embodies that commitment, totally. And he sees our past as a powerful way to shape our future. And he's always a steadfast advocate of this work. So it's my great pleasure to welcome Darren Walker. Please join me. Thank you, thank you, thank you Nikki. <laughs> thank you. Good morning. Good morning. And thank you, Nikki, and the planning team. This is fantastic. Archives, <laughs> history, narratives. This is what you all do because our society is informed by people like you who document, who archive and preserve our history. And our history tells us who we are as a people. And as a society, philanthropy has played a critical role in shaping who we are as a people. And so the work that you do is critical. It's critical to our civilization. 
it's critical to our democracy because this democracy depends on knowing who we are and being inspired, finding from those narratives stories that help us dream and help us believe, even in dark times, what is possible. So I'm grateful. And when Nikki told me that this conference was happening, I said, 30 years? This conference should happen every year. Why are we doing this on an ongoing basis? What's the, Nikki, we have to do this more often. <laughs> Seriously, we'll help fund it. I mean, it's a really important thing. This is hugely important. And I'm really grateful to all of the co-sponsors who made this day possible. Now, of course, in this digital era, there are new challenges that come when we think about how we preserve our history. So how do we think about long-term preservation of digital records? Because it is not easy to organize, especially for people like me, how to think about recording. I mean, I have PDFs of MacGeorge Bundy's correspondence, of Henry Ford II's notes, of all sorts of things that give me a uh, insight and a window into the Ford Foundation's history. And with the help of Nikki and her team, I've become more aware of what I need to do because it's not as simple because the president does less of those things that Mac George Bundy used to do, which was to take handwritten notes from a program officer about the civil rights program and, and write in the, in the margins and then have someone else do that and it all just be on one document. And it's, I don't do that. I, I get a Word document or some Excel something and I do little notes and annotations in the side, but I'm not really sure exactly how that's going to be preserved. But fortunately, the team here has helped me to be thoughtful that when I actually am doing the work of the president of the foundation, that I am doing it in a digital era, thinking about the future and thinking about preserving a record so that future presidents can benefit from the things that this president does right and wrong and the lessons learned just as I have. Because the amazing thing about this foundation is the remarkable record that has been left over eight decades. And we are enormously grateful to our colleagues at the Rockefeller Archive Center because you all have made the most efficient uh, and most robust uh, archive available, not just to scholars, because scholars uh, are a first uh, a line of, of people interested, but there are people beyond scholars, as you know, who are interested in the work. And I think that today, during a time of growing inequality and a time of growing cynicism about wealth and about even philanthropy, there is greater demand on us to be transparent in ways that we haven't had to be in the past. We remain the only sector in our society that does not have an external check on us. Yes, we have the IRS, and yes, we have regs, and our general counsel keeps us out of trouble. But I worked at a bank. I worked at a nonprofit. Every day, there was an external pressure on me and the organizations I worked for to deliver for customers, clients, people living in Harlem who we were there to serve. Every day, I felt that pressure, if we're to be honest with ourselves about philanthropy, we don't feel that pressure. 
we felt a different pressure, a passion to do justice in the world and to make a difference and to cure and solve some of these seemingly intractable problems. But that really takes a lot of self-generated uh, determination to be transparent, to monitor one's institutions, and to really take seriously impact. We can't take impact seriously if we don't take the preservation of our history seriously. And we're not willing to invest in it. And this starts with the president and the board. And it is incumbent every board of a legacy foundation and even newly created foundations and those donors need to see the work of people like you so that they can understand the history that they are making and their responsibility to preserve that history and to tell their story. So sharing knowledge, sharing what we are learning, thinking about how preserving helps us in this time when we've got so much risk assessment going on, how preserving history, our records, our documents, can help us mitigate risk. So for me, as I think about the Ford Foundation's history and my own um, personal interest, I love history. And I love being at the Ford Foundation because there is so much history and so much of the history is personal. In 1965, I was a little boy sitting um, in a small town in rural Texas on the front porch of our little shotgun house. And the lady walked up to the porch and she said to my mother that she was there to talk about a new government program that was going to be starting that summer in 1965. And the program was called Head Start. And I was enrolled in Head Start, and so I was lucky enough to be in the first class of Head Start. Lo and behold, when I came to the Ford Foundation, I said, I need to know our history. I'd love to know more about our history. And somewhere along the line, someone said, oh, well, Darren was in Head Start. And of course, what happens? In just a matter of hours, Nikki Lodico presents me with binders upon binders about the Ford Foundation's investment in a research project at Yale University in the early 60s, which made the recommendation to then the new Department of Economic Opportunity as a part of the Great Society to include this program called Head Start as a part of the Great Society. I also went to college on Pell Grants because I was from a low-income family and the Pell Grant program was intended for students like me. Lo and behold, there in the Ford Foundation archives, the Ford Foundation played a role in creating the Pell Grant program, which wasn't called the Pell Grant program. It became the Pell Grant program after its efficacy was proven. Senator Claiborne Pell took it up as a great champion of it and made it national policy. I could go on and on and on about the Ford Foundation's history and what preserving that history has made it possible for us today is to have credibility and currency because of that history and because we invested so meticulously and some would say rather expensively, yes, that is true, but it has been worth every dollar we have invested because to be able to tell the story of Muhammad Yunus walking into the Ford Foundation's office in Bangladesh in the 1970s with a paper, an idea for something called microfinance and a vision for something called Grameen Bank and how if the Ford Foundation got behind him, he might be able to help reduce poverty in the world. We have that documented. We have the entire narrative of Muhammad Yunus and the Ford Foundation 
and Grameen Bank and what he went on to do because part of the good news of these last few years has been that poverty in the world has actually gone down. And he has contributed, and the movement for microfinance contributed to that positive outcome. And so as you can see, I am very enthusiastic about the work that you do. I hope you feel it. And I know you're enthusiastic. And I hope your institutions, your presidents, your boards, are as enthusiastic as I am and as the four trustees are about that history because we can't have a future if we don't know our history and we don't know our history if we're not investing in the collection of it, in the preservation of it, and in the telling the story of it. So Nikki, thank you for allowing me to address this auspicious and marvelous, splendid group of colleagues. And I'm really grateful that you're all here. And Nikki, I'm gonna hold you to it. We can't wait 30 more years for another conference. Thank you all very much.